Good morning. Good to see you this morning. How many of you are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Anybody have something fantastic that the Lord did for him this week? Yes. Amen. Amen. Every day. Every day. That's right. Praise God. Well, um, uh, Pastor Michael is away this weekend. He went on a, to a conference, and he's coming back. He's on his way back. He'll be back by t this afternoon, and, uh, but he couldn't be back by this morning, so um, you're stuck with me. <laughs> but that's a good thing, because I'm a blessing from the Lord, and uh, you're a blessing from the Lord. Amen? Amen. And we got to get excited this morning. I don't want to hear no, you know, I was listening to, um, how many of you know Kenneth Copeland? And he has got a grandson called Jeremy Pearsons. I don't know, some of you probably heard Jeremy Pearsons preach. I'll tell you what, he's the up-and-coming preacher of tomorrow. He's a young man, and he is all on fire for the things of the Lord. And he was telling one of these things he was talking about. I was so inspired, I was thinking, this is so true. How many of you have ever been to some of those concerts or some kind of an event where there was like 50,000 people or something. You know, none of those people are bored. Do you ever think about that? When you go in those places, they're all excited. You can just feel the excitement. If you've been to a, uh, any kind of a, a sports event or you've been to a special singers come into town and you go hear them sing, they're not bored. Those people are so excited. They're jazzed. And they've even, some places, they even wear the colors of the team. You know, they're representing. And it's so amazing that you never see that. And then you come to church and you wonder, why is everybody so bored? You know, we need to put on the Lord Jesus Christ in the morning when we get ready to come to church and be excited. But you know why they're excited? They're all in agreement. All those 50,000 people on the way to their event kept telling everybody, this is going to be great. This is going to be so exciting. I can't wait to get there. This is wonderful. So they've already had the power of confession in operation. So when you get ready to go to church in the mornings, you need to look at somebody and say, this is going to be great. This is going to be exciting. I can't wait to get there to see what's going to happen. Amen? Amen. I'm telling you, we need to put on the Lord Jesus Christ in the mornings and get excited as we get ready to go to services because that way you'll generate that excitement. When you walk in and you look at somebody, you look at that greeter and you say, this is going to be great. This is going to be exciting this morning. I can't wait. Amen. And I hope that encourages you. And you know, as I was driving here this morning, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and he told me to tell you something. He said, no fear. No fear, no worry, no fret, no anxiety, no, no anxiousness. He said he's there to give you peace. So I want you just to reach out this morning and grab a hold of the peace of God. Amen? Amen, because he wants to give you that peace. Uh, I'm going to give you a few quick announcements, and we're going to go right into the offering. Uh, we got the baptismals coming up next week, uh, next Sunday. Next Sunday evening, and we're excited about that. If you want to be baptized, never been baptized, or maybe you want to be baptized again. Some people are baptized more than once. That's pretty cool. So um, if you want to do that, put your name on the back of the offering envelope and let me know who all is going to be involved in that. Uh, if you have children or grandchildren that want to be baptized, that would be a great time to bring them. We're going to do that next Sunday evening, so and be sure to invite He somebody. doesn't lay it aside because he doesn't like what it sees. You know, how many people you know that? Lay the word aside because I don't like that. I don't like that scripture. Or he doesn't lay it aside because it's too hard. Oh, that's just too hard to do. You mean walk in love? No. I, forgive? Oh, no, I'm not going to forgive those people. They deserve what they get. See, it's just too hard to forgive. See, that's what they say. Or he doesn't abandon the word because he might lose friends. He doesn't abandon the word because he might have to give up something comfortable you know his comfortability or something in his life maybe a habit or a situation he doesn't even abandon the word because something else looks better he doesn't throw the word a doer of the word does he does the word regardless he does the word regardless of if he's if fear tries to come or not it doesn't matter if fear's creeping in he pushes that aside and lets the word live big inside of him that's what a doer of the word does 
And then it says in verse 25, it says, But who, he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, that's the word, and continues in it, is not a forgetful hearer. He doesn't forget what it says. If he looks continually in this word, and he's not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of what it says to do, this one will be blessed in what he does. And you know that word blessed it's also can mean empowered. Empowered in what he does. You want the power of the Holy Spirit living inside of you? You want the power to get through your situations? You want the ability to be a strong and faithful Christian? Do the word and you will be empowered because the word empowers you, praise God. Hearing and seeing and knowing is all part of the mix of doing. You have to see, you have to hear, you have to know. God gave us those abilities. Those are things that he gave us, those great things in our life. Those have to be, but you have to do those along with the word of, with doing the word of God. They all work together. You kind of need them all to build the foundation of the word. It's kind of like having a cement person that comes to your house and he buys all the equipment to, to build you a driveway. He's going to lay you a foundation of the driveway out there and he buys all that stuff and he puts it out there in your yard and he reads all the directions and knows exactly what to do but he never does it well how do you have a foundation you don't have a foundation until he builds it see and that's the same way with the word you won't have the foundation until you start doing the word of God you have to do it to have the foundation built and that's what you that's what you need in your in your life in Matthew 7, Jesus said these words. Matthew 7, verse 24. Let's start there. He says, Therefore, who hear, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who builds his house upon a rock. And the rain descends, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine, now I didn't say this, Jesus says this, and does not do them, he will be like a foolish man. A foolish man who built his house on a sand. Now, how many of you have ever walked on a sandy beach? It's kind of loose, isn't it? You can walk along the beach and slip and slide and, you know, almost fall sometimes. And the rains descend and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house and it fell. See, that's the importance of the Word of God. If you listen to what Jesus is telling you to do in the Word of God, if you listen and you hear the Word, then you've got to be a doer. Otherwise, if you're not a doer, you hear the Word, you're like the foolish man who's building his house upon the sand. And your house will fall. It will fail. You, when trouble comes and situations arise in your life and you're faced with all kinds of tragedies or what you call tragedies, situations, then what happens is, is you faint and you fall and you get, you, you're a blubbering, silly person. You're foolish because of all the things because you didn't stand on the word of God. It's real important. But if you build your house on, it, on that rock, on the word of God, and you do what it says and you, you hear it and you do it, then you've built, got a good, solid foundation. Amen. There's power in the doing. It says, blessed are those who obey it and practice it. That's what Jesus said. Blessed are those who, do, who obey it and practice it. If you want the promise of the word, you've got to do the word. Praise the, You know, I say this all the time. It's the knowledge of God's word act up, acted upon that brings forth the promise. It's the knowledge of God's word acted upon that brings the promise. The word will only be active in you in the measure in which you practice it. So it's real important. If you want the word to be strong, you've got to start doing it. If you want to increase in, your, in, in something in your life, in faith, in, in believing for healing and finances, then study the word in that area, and you'll grow stronger in that area, and you'll build a foundation of that area, and your house will not fall in that area when, when situations arise. Amen? Amen. I'm going to close with this one story that I uh, found. <coughs> And I want you to think about this as, as we talk about it. Let's pretend that you have a great company. You own this company. And I work for you. I'm your assistant, your head assistant. 
and you decide that to make this company even better, you're going to go abroad into another nation and start the company there. So we'll have an international company and a company here. So you're going to get your family, and you're going to go over there for about six months, and you're going to build that company till it's up and it's going, but you're going to leave me in charge of the company here. And you tell me as you get ready to go, now look, I'm going to mail you letters and tell you exactly what to do all the time. Every week you're going to get a letter. You're going to hear from me. I'm going to give you instructions. I'm going to have you be able to know how to run this company and it'll be successful. And so you leave and you go away and I stay and I run the company. Well, after about six months, you decide you need to come back here and check on the company that you've given me to run. So you drive up to the building and you look at the building and you go, oh my goodness, the weeds are so tall. What? They haven't even mowed the grass. What's going on? And you walk into the reception and the receptionist is sitting there and she's filing her nails and she's chewing her gum and she's got her music playing and she doesn't even see you walk in the door. And you are looking for me. You're saying, where is Pastor Jenny? She's supposed to be doing my my job where is she and you look around you see the trash cans are overflowing the carpet hasn't even been vacuumed in who knows how long people are in rooms and they're having food and there's a television your office has been made into a, a television room where they can watch soap operas during the day and you're wondering my goodness where's pastor jenny so you ask somebody and they they point you down the hall and you find me sitting in this room playing chess with the head salesman and you say, excuse me, um, I need to talk with you. So you bring me into your office, and we're standing in there, and you go, I, I'm sorry, I don't understand. What happened? And I go, well, what, what, what? This is, you know, what, what's going on? And you say, well, I left you in charge. Yeah, I know, this is great. I just haven't, this is great. And you say, no, no, I sent you all those letters, and I told you what to do. I gave you the instructions. I, I left you in charge. What happened? You, you didn't do any of them. And you go, oh, yeah, we got those letters. Those were great letters. We really liked them. In fact, what we did as, a, as an employees while you're gone, we had a reading of the letters every Friday. Yeah, every Friday we got together and we read the letters out loud and we studied the letters. Oh my gosh, you know what some people even did? They started memorizing lines from the letters. Yeah, they remember one person individual, one person specifically, he didn't just memorize the line, he memorized the whole letter. Wow, that was good. Now what would you say to that? You mailed me letters for me to do it, but we didn't do anything you said. See, that's what Jesus has done. This is his letter. He's given his letters. Oh, we have Bible studies. We study the word of God, but we're not doing what he said to do. We're busy just studying it, memorizing it, but we aren't applying it to our lives. That's as foolish as this story I just told you. You wouldn't do that or expect that that company wouldn't be successful. It wouldn't, it wouldn't prosper. There would be no blessing. And it's the same way with the word of God. If we're not doers of what God has told us to do, we're not going to be blessed. He's not going to be blessed. And we're not going to get accomplished what he asked us to do. Can you say amen? That's true, isn't it? Amen. Well, I thought that was a good story. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We give you praise today. Thank you for your word. Glory to God. Ese bronde ancara. Nengerea satalabidando. Ishenemisa. Praise you, praise you, praise you, Father. We thank you for your word. Lord, today we're going to take this opportunity to, to let our hearts be convicted and make a change. That we're going to be more doers of the word. That we're going to purpose our, in our hearts and purpose ourselves to be a, applying the word of God. Not just to read it, not just to memorize it, not just to talk it, but we're going to apply it in our lives and do it and be that doer that you've called us to be so that we can be prosperous and blessed in all that we put our hands to and all that we do we thank you father and praise you
praise you for your blessing in our lives and for what you're doing and the word that you've given to us. Now, there might be somebody here this morning that just needs prayer. If that's you and you need some prayer this morning over something, maybe you've dealt with some kind of sickness in your body or a situation, or maybe you, you're concerned about something. You've been fighting that fight of fear, trying to push back that fear. If that's you, just raise your hand this morning. We're just going to pray for you. Well, praise God, everybody's victorious, hallelujah. I'm glad, that's good, that's a good report. That means that, that you're standing on the word. See, I knew, I told you, you all were doers of the word. <laughs> Amen. Well, I want to thank you personally for coming this morning, being a part of the service, and, and being here, and, and uh, just being a support. You're a blessing, and I, we appreciate you so very much and love you very much.